Kazania system, part two. We know what alternating reading is. Our very next step is designing the most important key ingredient of the system. And I know some of you looking at this subwoof and say, man, that's got to be it. No, 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 no. This is the number of passive radio. It follows instructions. It's a little complicated. It helps follow instructions too. The most important ingredient after you making sure you're electrical, which is power. The most important ingredient for that is your amplifier. Your amplifier makes and breaks your system. Maybe some of you think that's a secret. It's not a secret. Your amplifier makes and breaks your system. What should you look for in amplifier? You need to look for an amplifier with a, with a good signal to noise ratio. The SNN signal to noise ratio is similar to the subwoofer SENS ratio, the sensitivity rating. Whereas the subwoofer sensitivity rating means that per one watt, you get this much dB. Where does it get the one watt from? The one watt is noise. You get that from the amplifier, which has a signal to noise ratio, which says based on 2.83 volts or the like, you get this much dB. So if you got an amplifier that's, let's say, signal noise ratio of 106, <laughs> with 105, <laughs> Which is great. Ball game power, baby. <laughs> and then you go to a subwoofer that gives you a, I don't know, 95 or 93 dB rating with one watt. Hey, man, what's your loss? With well, 6 dB? Okay, then. They pair together very nicely. But let's get us on another topic. You amplify. You want to amplify with a good signal noise ratio. The higher, the better. It's more efficient you're going to be. Next, you want to amplify. That's a good dampening factor. Dampening factor is like brakes. Brakes. Every good vehicle needs brakes. Lamborghini, Countach, McLaurin, uh, Bentley, whatever you want to name, Corvette, Mustang. <laughs> you're only as good as, you're fast, but you're only as good as you can stop. Because you can't never stop, you're going to get one run out the gate and that's it. You're only as good as, you're only as fast as fast as you can stop. You're only as fast as fast as you can stop. Say that again. You're only as fast, only as good as as fast as you can stop. Right? That's why they give you elaborate brake systems on cars. Well, there's elaborate brakes, a built-in brake system on the amplifier. It's called the dampening factor. It is the ability of the amplifier to start and stop on a dime the signal that it puts out to the passive radiator. AKA the subwoofer. The higher the dampening factor, the cleaner the sound you hear. The higher the dampening factor, the cleaner the sound you hear. You want a dampening factor greater than 200. And the dampening factor needs to be at the lowest rated on rating the dampening factor can do. Falls gate. Great dampening factor is greater than 200 at one ohm. As you go up in resistance, you go up in dampening factor. The higher the dampening factor, the better it sounds. You want to you want to amplify this. One ohm is greater than if two ohm is. Hold on, this is my daughter. I don't know if she wants attention or not, but she came in slapping cabinets and every damn thing. Okay, so a dampening factor is greater than the dampening factor is if if, if one ohm is if one ohm is greater than two. At two ohm or four ohm, it's going to be at four ohm it'll be double that. So you might be at 400 dampening factor at a full on rate. See, we got, we got children. And she grown, she's about 20, 20, 21 years old. But you know, they, the extras, the extras. They, any of y'all got a daughter? I'm, you, y'all, I'm sure some of y'all shaking your head, probably laughing, because y'all know what I'm going through. You kill the world for them, right? But then they bug the hell out of you till they leave something. Then they nice and sweet and kind. But anyway, so you got a good signal noise ratio. You got a high dampening factor. And now you're wondering, well, what ohm load should I run? Why does everybody run one ohm? Everybody run one ohm for one reason. They get all the power. And they think that means something. But they got all this power, but they got no control. With some amplifiers. But any amplifier, I don't care how good it is, it loses some of this dampening factor as it goes, even the fog, even the J-Audio. 
it loses a bit of control and starts to stop on the dime, the more power it freely gives out. My system, y'all hear it all the time. Right now, one of the one on low, but I'll be the first to tell you, I can tell this between a, a system running one on and a system running two on, unless that system is GL powered, because the GL audio is a whole different other story. GL audio give you the same power at one, two, three, and four. But the damage effect is still going to change, but it's going to be hard for you to tell. Falls gate to me is the poor man's JL. Maybe that's why I'm running. But, but I can hear the difference between the two. I depend on the system and what the, the subs I choose. Sometimes a manufacturer, the sub I might choose at a particular time, don't have D2 subs, don't have D4. And if I'm running four, I might never get that, that, that low that I want. I know that two of them does sound better than one of them. That's why I kick her. J Audio. They don't tend to make amps that go into one on. I think JR don't got one line of subwoofers that go to one on. Kicker doesn't. All they amplifiers, two on low. Two on low. Uh, Fallsgate, one on low. Now, so you got the signal noise ratio, you got the dampening factor, and now you know what on, now which on low you're gonna run on is on you. I'm telling you, the lower your own low, the greater your electrical gonna have to be. Please remember that. The lower your own low, it's a lot of stress on your electrical. Yeah. Is the amplifier gonna get hotter? Possibly. It's gonna get a lot hotter than we get if it's running to a higher resistance. Because your own low is resistance. It's like a pipe. It's pipe, it's like a pipe. It's like running, putting a lot of force through foam, two ohm, one ohm. In rush of power, no control. Two ohm. In rush of power, more so than foam, but you got a little control. Foam, I got all the control I need. Moderate power. However, I want you to understand what a amplifiers basically doing why they get hot in the first place. If it gets hot or it gets warm, it's basically doing its job. It should never get too hot where you can't touch it. If it gets too hot where you can't touch it, then you got a, you got a power problem. But what your amplifier is doing is taking DC signal. Your, your car runs on, your car starts and the battery is DC. 13.8 with amplifiers spinning up. It's taking direct current. Direct current. The coils running around when you get on one side of the wire, you get positive. On the other side of the wire, you get negative. It's taking that and turning it into AC. And that's where you get some of your losses at. Sound system, cardio, man, this is basic electricity. That's all this is, basic electricity. So you're taking 14 volts DC and turning it into an AC voltage. And that's where you lose a lot of your losses at. Because your passive, your radiator, whether it's your mids and your highs, your tweeters, your six and a half, your six by nines, or your eights or your twelves, whatever you got for your mids and highs, and your subwoofers, they only work and operate off AC. They don't work off DC. This passive radiator device works off AC. As the voltage switches and changes, so many cycles a second, 30 hertz, 35, 40 hertz, what do you get? You get what you translate in the hurry into bass. Or you hear vocals, or you hear t -t 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 -t. all that is AC. This whole thing is basic electricity, y'all. Once you understand electricity, then you can understand how to make somebody's car loud. It's not just buying the speakers and throwing it in the box. It's 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 it's, it's, it's a science to it. It's a science to it. That's why I tell you, I'm not even I'm not into brands as far as subwoofers. I am into technology and brands when it comes to amplifiers. I'm definitely into technology and brands when it comes to amplifiers. I'm only going to run certain amplifiers. I don't care what all they come out there with. I don't care about the Sundown, DC Audio, or Wolfram Audio. I don't care nothing about that. I'm going to be a Fallsgate man to the day I die. If I ain't running Fallsgate, maybe I'm rich enough to run J Audio. <laughs> if now I'm going to run Kicker. Why? Because the amps be rated. They got high dampening factor. They got high signal to noise ratio. Those are the three key ingredients that you need when you have when you select an amplifier. Once you know your alternating range, and then you select your amplifier, 
and where you're going to put it at. The three things you're looking for amplify again in closing. Signal to noise ratio. Dampening factor. Signal to noise ratio. Dampening factor. What on those you're going to run it in. Two sounds better than one. Four sounds better than one and two. The higher your ohm load, the resistance you have, the greater your dampening factor. The greater the sub's going to sound. The deeper your bass note's going to be. The cooler your amp's going to run. However, you do get all your power at one ohm. These are decisions you got to make. Also remember that when you run your amplifier at one ohm, your electric is going to have to be stout because there's no control. A lot of power coming in, a lot of power going out. Takes power to make power. Point blade period. Don't ever forget that. So... We know alternator rating. We know what app five we're gonna run. I'm gonna talk to you later in designing your system part three on the next key ingredient. Holla.